Tessa and yeah, I'm doing this project. I'm Linda and uh, I'm doing this project with her. <laughs> and you are from which city and which school? We're from Neda, uh, from het Assing Lyceum. Yeah, the third class. Okay, thank you. What is your project about? Well, 37% of all the, all the oil floating on the sea comes from the oil reservoirs on the bottom of the sea. And if air play, plates start moving, those, that oil will lack, leak from the oil reservoirs into the sea, together with methane. And half of the methane goes into the air, which uh, causes the same effect as CO2, <laughs> which is really bad for the climate. And uh, that gets, you get an oil slick on the surface, so uh, that damage fish and birds. And that will float around there for more than three months. And it will totally change, but it will not sink uh, in three months, but after that it will sink. But in three months it can do really damage to the nature, and that's what we're trying to uh, prevent. And, uh, we want to um, protect the ocean to, um, to the oil, and we want to do that to get it by the surge. So uh, that's the oil leak, and as you can see here, um, uh, there, we have two robots with a ceiling between it. Uh, you can put it over uh, the leak and you can fill it with the oil, uh, just like a balloon. Um, the ceiling uh, is uh, filtering, so the water gets out and the oil stays in. We also um, win uh, methane with it. You can um, get from methane earth oil to put it on very high pressure. So you've, uh, you've got a lot, uh, yeah, and there is less sea pollution. Okay, so you filter the oil and you put it back uh, to us, to people, to use it again. You think you can win the prize today? Definitely. <laughs> well, I hope so. Okay, so. okay, thank you. Then we are going to your teacher, if we can ask you here, please. Okay. No. Okay. Now, uh, my first question, can you introduce yourself? My name is Marianne Pipes and I am their geography student, of a teacher. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so from the from uh, Aden you said, so which city? Le Leiden. Oh. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, and where is it actually? In the east, okay, nice, thank you. Okay, German border you said. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, what have you done and uh, what was the idea of uh, joining the INESPO this year? Well, uh, we have a group of uh, students at our school that needs to be challenged more and uh, one of the projects like INESPO is an uh, opportunity for them to show the world and uh, the school how uh, smart they are and uh, because of the uh, chance to win some uh, trip like to Brazil or United States it gets a little extra reason yes. for uh, us to join NESPO. So motivation and to motivate your children, your uh, uh, the students, you can use NESPO in the favor. And, um, and was it difficult for you to train these children to NESPO or was it difficult to motivate the children? No, well, Linda also uh, joined the NESPO project last year and we won uh, the public um, the audience prize and uh, Linda al already wanted to join Inespo and I think uh, Tessa just joined, joined her and it was their idea and they asked me to be, be, be their uh, tutor? Tu tutor. Tutor. Yeah, tutor and I said yes so it's, uh, it was their idea not mine okay and you have done it for how long? how long are you uh, was, was, were you busy with this project to put it to build it? Start from the start of the school year. Yeah. So that's like five months. Yeah. yeah. And was it difficult for you in special? No, not with those two. Those two. Uh, no. So you enjoyed it to to. Yes, I joined it very much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my last question: Do you recommend the other schools also or the other tutors to motivate their children to join in Espo and why? 
of course I uh, want to motivate them because it's a project that can maybe change the world and uh, as you see how great ideas you, you find here it's just amazing how you can um, make the world a little bit better to give animals and plants and other ourselves more chance to enjoy this. Thank you very much for your time.